Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com. Today, we're removing the pistons from the white Wookiee. All right, when we last left our Wookiee, we had pulled all of the rod bearings to inspect them, and we found one, one with damage in it. So what does that mean? Well, that means we're going to be completely stripping the bottom end. We are going to be replacing the connecting rod bearings, connecting rod bolts, main bearings, main bolts, blocks going to the machine shop. Everybody's going to get happy. Uh, so we're going to make the bottom end just as happy as we did with the cylinder head. The good thing for you guys is you get to see what this entire process looks like. The bad part is, is it delays how long it's going to take and it pushes finishing the car back just a little bit, but nothing horrible. The upside is I feel a hundred times better about just going all the way in and redoing everything. There's not that lingering, you know, nagging thing in the back of my mind going, Charles, you should have done this. Charles, you should have done this. Charles, you should have done this. <sighs> it's gone. So what are we going to be doing today? Today I'm going to show you how to remove the pistons from an engine. This is very universal. You can follow these tips and techniques for just about anything. We're also going to be marking them two different ways. The first way is going to be with a paint marker. There's a link down in the description if you want to know what kind of paint marker I'm going to be using. That's all fine and well, except we're going to be sending the pistons out to get the skirts coated with some space age polymer coating deal that I'll talk a little bit more about when I actually get the pistons back so I can show you what it looks like and we can compare an old piston versus one that's got the coating on it. So we're going to need to mark it in a different way other than the paint pen because when they clean it to coat it uh, or before they coat it, uh, they'll probably wash that paint off. So I'm going to show you how to do that, multiple ways to do that. As we go along, the things that I talk about, as always, I try and put links down in the description for you. So one, you can see what I'm talking about. And two, if you need to buy that stuff, there's a direct link right there. So even though I'm not super thrilled that we're having to go this deep, again, this is actually a good thing. So uh, let's get to it. All right, so our first step before we do anything is going to be labeling all of our pistons. Now we're gonna be sending the pistons out to get cleaned and coated. So Simply marking them with paint isn't going to be good enough overall, but until we get them out on the bench, I'm just going to go ahead and throw paint marks on the tops of the pistons. All that will be cleaned off eventually, and we'll mark them a little bit more permanently when they're on the bench. Now, because we're working on a VR6, of course, we have a slightly odd pattern. Cylinder 1, Cylinder 3, Cylinder 5. This would be our exhaust manifold side. Cylinder 2, Cylinder 4, and Cylinder 6. So let's go ahead and mark these up. Remember, these paint marks are going to come off. This is just a temporary marking until we get them on the bench. Of course, we need to remove any dirt or oil. And cylinder six. Now that we have all of our pistons marked, I'm gonna roll the engine over and we're gonna start taking the pistons out. You may remember we had one bearing that was pretty nasty. I never actually fully put this bearing back on. So we're gonna start with that piston. And luckily for us, it's already unbolted. You can see it right down here. Now we're also going to remove the crankshaft as well. But before we remove the crankshaft, we have some other work to do. We gotta take the balancer pulley off and the flywheel off because we need to get access to the bolts here. So we're gonna start with the pistons. Now they do make special hammers and tools to remove this stuff. I don't have any of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this plastic wedge and I'm just gonna tap the pistons out with it. This is a trim tool wedge. It's probably not the best thing to use for it. You wanna make sure you're not using something hard. Even though we're gonna go ahead and replace these bearings, we don't wanna risk maybe like using a screwdriver and it's slipping or something like that and causing damage in a place we don't want it. So I'm gonna take my plastic trim wedge and I'm just gonna kinda tap the piston on out. Now it's gonna to get to a point where you're gonna to need to get down here underneath the engine and catch the piston. You can also sometimes simply just push it out like that with the end of a hammer. That usually works pretty well too. It all depends on how much room you have. Here's our first piston out. You can see plenty of crud 
in the piston. We'll go ahead and clean this off. You can see the skirt actually looks pretty good. It's hard to tell whether it's a little bit shiny or it's the reflection from the lighting, but it actually does look pretty good. Clean the other side off as well. So you can see a tiny bit of wear right in here. Nothing bad though. That was cylinder four. Now in order to make sure we keep everything straight, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together. Remember we're replacing bearings, so I'm not too worried about this not sitting properly, but we'll go ahead and make it look nice. I got my arrow here. This is facing forward to the engine. I have my label here. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a punch. And we're just gonna put four tiny dots right here on the piston. That way, even though they're gonna clean this and, and make it all happy and pretty, we'll still know exactly where this piston came from. Now, none of this should be very tight at all. Remember we had pulled all these connecting rod caps off to inspect the bearing. So this should be pretty easy to take apart. This is one that the bearing stuck on. Now we'll take our hammer, just tap it down and push the piston up the bottom. Do a quick inspection. Looks pretty good. This is cylinder five. My paint marker got a little out of control, but it won't be too big of a deal. Again, we'll go ahead and put this back together. When we pulled them apart the first time, I marked so that they go back the same way. And again, we'll take a punch and punch five dots here to make sure that we get this back in cylinder five. And all we got is one more. So we'll go ahead and do our last one next. All right, so now that we have all of the pistons out of the engine, it's time to go ahead and permanently mark them. Remember, we're gonna get these cleaned, so these paint marks are going to come off. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a small punch, and I'm just gonna put the number of dots for the cylinder. So this was cylinder three. I'm gonna put three dots in there. Something that works really well for this is one of the spring-loaded punches. We just have to simply push down on it, and it will make the indentation. But I don't have one of those, so a punch and a little love tap with a hammer, it'll do just fine. Now, our goal is not to break this in half. We just simply need to make sure we know where to put it back. One. Two. Three. Now, I also recommend working on a cushioned surface. This is a nice rubber, thick rubber mat on top of my Sonic Tools toolbox. You could use a soft piece of wood or something like that, but you really don't want to be wrapping on it while it's sitting on a cement floor or something that's really, really hard surface. So here's our three indentations. And for consistency's sake, I'm going to do them all on the same spot. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can see there's my six marks. Now there are tools that you can actually stamp a six or a five or a four or a three or whatever into these. I don't have that either, so this is one of those deals. We're just gonna make do with what we have. This is a perfectly fine way of marking your stuff so that we make sure it goes back together right. The one with the special paint mark was cylinder five. You could probably even, if you really wanted to, just jam down real hard on it and make the mark. But I like to give it a little more tap than that. One, two, three, 
four, five. This one's cylinder four. Cylinder two. And the easiest one of all, number one. If you look really close in there, you can see some, some leftover goop. This is why we're gonna get these cleaned and run them through the parts cleaner as well. We'll go ahead and put new piston rings in them too to make sure that's, uh, that's all happy. We have them out and we might as well put new stuff in. Again, this is deeper than I had planned to go, but we're in this deep, we might as well go for it. All right, so there we have it. Pistons are out, pistons are marked, ready to go. Uh, we'll disassemble them and take the rings off and all that in a different video. I actually already have that video shot, just need to get it edited and uploaded for you guys, probably tweak it just a little bit as well. But I wanted to get this one out because it's actually been a little while since I've done a working video. So if you like this video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. On YouTube, don't forget to hit that bell so you get notifications about new videos. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Snapchat. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.